Boker Tov. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Rabbi Steve Texan of the Cuban Hebrew Congregation, Temple Bet Shmuel of Miami Beach. Well, we stand in the shadow of Rosh Hashanah, the awesome high holidays, approaching in four days. I'm recording this on a Tuesday. Rosh Hashanah morning is Saturday. We have prepared a beautiful service, a cappella with piano accompaniment as well. My message this morning is short, but I hope relevant. The COVID-19 pandemic has given us this incredible sense of vulnerability, uncertainty. We are frightened. In the beginning, we were more frightened than we are now. After six months of coping with this and being highly aware of it, we feel more adjusted and we see it subsiding to some degree, but we are coping. We are coping in this zone of uncertainty. When we have hurricanes, we call it the cone of uncertainty. We all live life with a certain uncertainty and a vulnerability. This is why in the Unitane Tokef, central prayer of high holidays, we read, who shall live, who shall die, and all the methods of passing away are enumerated. All the dangerous phenomena, who by fire, who by water. And we have these two catastrophes this particular week simultaneously. The fires in California, a hurricane two, possibly cat three, in Louisiana, multiple catastrophes with the COVID-19, the coronavirus. We have to embrace the vulnerability and establish a sense of calm within the storm. But even without these threats, to our stability and our calm, every high holiday season is fraught with some fear and trepidation in the midst of our celebration. Because we're not supposed to be sad on Rosh Hashanah, but rather reflective and somber but not sad, serious, but celebratory and hopeful. Digging into the deepest sources of our faith. And God will sustain us. We have been reading in the Torah of the entrance of the Jews into the promised land. And God says to Moses and Moses to the people, the land that you are about to enter is not like the land of Egypt because this land is a land of hills and valleys, soaks up the water from the rains of heaven. It is a land which the Lord your God looks after, which the Lord your God always keeps his eye on from year's beginning to year's end. Fear not. God is the source of our strength and our faith. In the feeling of vulnerability, we must look to each other. In the next person's fear, the next person's vulnerability, and have compassion not only pity, but compassion. Because compassion and pity are very different. Compassion includes pity. 
Pity may not include compassion. Pity can sometimes make us aloof from the person who's suffering as we look upon the, the suffering but are removed. That's your problem. You deal with it. When we look with compassion, we want to know how we can help. We go from the vertical position, sometimes even a little bit arrogant, to the horizontal petition, we position. We bend down. How can we help? What can we do to help? How do we respond to suffering, to crisis? We are all in it together. The phrase has been thrown around throughout this pandemic. We're all in it together. Alone, together, we will emerge victorious. How can we help? And on the second day of Rosh Hashanah, when we read about the Akedah, the binding of Isaac, how Isaac was spared being sacrificed, and the angel of God withheld the hand of Abraham from striking his son when Abraham's faith was tested to the max. Abraham passed the test of faith in God, complete faith, that he would be the father of the Jewish people. What happened? Isaac asked, the wood is here, the altar is here. Where is the lamb? Where is the sacrifice? And Avraham answered his son, God will provide the sacrifice. Avraham did not answer, my son, you are the sacrifice. He would never say that to his beloved son. God will provide it. And indeed, God did. What happened? A lamb was caught in the thicket, in the bushes. And Avraham, in order to sacrifice the lamb in place of his beloved son, had to go over and extricate the lamb from the thicket, untangle the animal in order to make the sacrifice. The lamb was not going to approach Avraham. Avraham, Avraham had to go and do an act, the mitzvah of extricating the lamb to provide the sacrifice. And in life, mitzvot take effort. So in life, we have to use our wisdom and our energy to fulfill the mitzvah. It's an effort, but yet it is rewarding for us. And we don't even realize how great the reward is, as we have discussed in past weeks. The value of any mitzvah only God knows. Even what we may think of as miscellaneous mitzvot in the eyes of God can be very important. And on Yom Kippur, Hashem the Almighty takes that into account. So Avraham went over and extricated the lamb and provided the sacrifice in place of his son. We must all share responsibility to a great degree for each other. This is how we have a society. We must feel a sense of shared vulnerability. We have free choice in this world to rise according to our abilities to be successful, but not to forget those who are not as fortunate and not able to achieve the successes that many of us achieve. So compassion for humanity, 
understanding, not only pity, but true compassion. And in this spirit, let us enter the high holidays with renewed hope that this will be a year of greater compassion, greater understanding of each other's situation in life, and remove the divisions and work toward healing the world, not ascribing blame, but rather each of us taking responsibility to make this a greater world, a better world, a safer world, a more peaceful world. May it be a year of sweetness and success and most of all, good health. L'shana tova tikatevu v'techatemu. May you all, may we all, be inscribed and sealed for a good and sweet year. Amen, Shabbat Shalom, Shana Tovah.